The problem that I have with learning Redstone is that it's all self-taught. Now, I actually quite enjoy self-teaching. It's actually one of my favorite ways to learn. The problem comes with the fact that I don't know what I don't know. This means that if there is some circuit that I need for a build, I might just not know if there's anything that exists that does what I want. And if it does exist, I won't know what it's called in order to research it. In order to help with this, I'm gonna talk about a bunch of small circuits that I've picked up over the years, some embarrassingly late, that are relatively simple, but might not be the most commonly known. All right, so the first one is the glass tower. The glass tower is really convenient because it lets you take a redstone signal from the ground and propagate it upwards in a one by two block area. Um, you can see that the glass does not cut off the signal across the diagonals here, um, like you'd expect from an opaque block. Um, now the OG way to do this was a torch tower, and these actually take less space, but the main disadvantage with these is that they take time to propagate upwards, whereas the glass tower uh, does not. Um, if you have to refresh the signal if you're going really high up, then it'll delay by however many repeaters you have, but a torch tower every two blocks, you delay it by how long it takes a torch to invert, which is pretty long. Uh, we can see that I only went up like eight blocks and it's taking quite a while to get up here. Now, much like torch towers, the signal was only going to propagate upwards from the glass tower. Um, so if I'm powering it on the top, it's not gonna go downwards. Whereas if I power on the bottom, it will travel all the way to the top. Next up are monostable circuits. Um, I also call them pulse limiters, and I've seen people use monostable circuits or pulse limiters interchangeably. I mean, what it does is essentially limits the input pulse. So if I have the input and I turn it on indefinitely, we can see that the output uh, flashes on and off for a very brief amount of time because um, we're kind of limiting the input pulse there. Um, the way we build it is we put a sticky piston on the ground facing upwards. We put an opaque block on top of it. It has to be opaque because it has to be able to carry a redstone signal. Then we have a redstone dust on the input side. We have a repeater facing away from the piston on the output side. And then we can test it by putting some sort of long pulse on the input and making sure that the output is limited. Um, you can increase the length of the output pulse by increasing the length of the repeater um, like that. And if you want it to be a longer uh, period of time, you'll need a pulse extender, which I will get to later in the video. Now that brings us to later in the video for the pulse extender. The pulse extender does the exact opposite of what we just did, where if you have an input pulse that's very short, it will have the output pulse, pulse on for a longer period of time. Now the way you build it is exactly how it looks, where you just have repeaters um, facing somewhere. They have to go into opaque blocks again, um, because the blocks have to be able to carry redstone signal. And then you have a repeater facing away from that block into a new block um, and so on and so forth. And you can do as many of these as you would like um, in order to increase the pulse length of your output. Then what you do is you place redstone dust to the side of these opaque blocks so that it's able to grab the signal. Um, because if this block is powered, it'll power the redstone dust next to it. And you attach them to all of your opaque blocks. Um, so pretty much what happens is when we power this, um, if I do it right, um, it will essentially power this block for four ticks and then it turns off and this one powers for four ticks and that one turns off and then this one powers for four ticks. But because the redstone dust is attached to all of them, it will be on continuously. Um, even though not all of the blocks are on at the same time. Now, I will warn you that the input will be, or rather the output will be delayed for however long the first repeater is set to. Um, you can change it by making this repeater a different delay, but if you don't make the repeaters all the same delay, you'll run into an issue where if your input pulse is too fast, um, and mainly if it's faster than the longest delay of the repeater you have in the chain, it will essentially flash on and off at one point, and I did it too slow. You can see that it kind of turns on and then it uh, turns off and then turns back on again. Next up is the double piston extender. Um, so this will push a block two blocks away and then it will track it fully to its original position. Um, the way you build it for Java edition, uh, because Java and Bedrock are gonna be different because why would they be the same? Is you have two pistons facing one direction. Um, it doesn't matter which direction. I'll even invert it for you. Uh, from the demo. So you have two pistons facing one direction and then you have your block of choice or this could have like a sticky uh, slime or honey block and that can have other blocks, but whatever you're pushing. Then on the one where the piston is starting, so the far end that isn't the block, you have a repeater of delay two. Then on the middle, you have a repeater of delay four and then you have dust going into that block and then you just attach them all to the same dust. I mean, try it by powering anywhere on the dust and making sure that it works properly. Now, in order for this to work in Bedrock Edition, you make this far end a delay of three, and then on the middle, you make it a delay of six. So you have a delay of four, and then you have delay of two. Um, and then you can attach like this, and this should modify it to work in Bedrock Edition. 
Next up is the AND gate. Um, the AND gate is a type of a logic gate, and logic gates are pretty widely used in fields such as electrical engineering and programming. Um, they're also very useful for us because they do similar things and they are useful for redstone. Um, so the output of the AND gate is this torch in the middle here. Um, I could grab it with a signal uh, with like redstone or something, and I'm gonna put a redstone lamp so we can see it easier. The AND gate has two inputs, um, and the output is only on if both of the inputs are on. So we have uh, both of them are off, so the output's off. We turn one on, output's still off. We turn another one on, output's still off. We turn both of them on, and the output now turns on. Um, this is really convenient for things such as like combination door locks that require all of your levers or buttons to be in the right combination rather than just one lever being in the right one and having your door open. The way we build it is we have three opaque blocks. Um, they have to be opaque because they have to carry redstone signals. Um, we place two torches on the top of the side ones. We place redstone dust on the top of the middle one. Redstone torch on the uh, side of the middle one. This is your signal so you can grab it with like uh, redstone dust or whatever. Then the inputs have to go into these blocks. Um, they can come in from the side, they can come in from the back, and they can also come in from below if you use a redstone torch or something. Next up is the transistor. Um, transistors in electrical engineering are quite complicated. Uh, Minecraft world is a lot more simplified. Uh, the thing about a transistor though is it's essentially a digital switch. And essentially we have an input signal here, um, which I have kind of on an arbitrary um, clock signal, but this could be anything. Um, this could also have different signal strengths. Um, and then we have a control signal here, which controls if the switch is on or off. Um, our output signal is here. So when our control signal is off and the switch is off, um, nothing is going into the output. If we turn the switch on, then the output is equal to the input. Um, so this is kind of nice. The, this is logically equivalent to an AND gate if you don't care about the signal strength. Um, so sometimes this can be a little bit of an easier way to make an AND gate. The real magic with this though, and the reason that it's a transistor and it's a distinct thing, is if you use a comparator to grab the signal, um, you can have a different signal strength go into the block and grab the same signal strength on the end of it, whereas an AND gate will refresh the signal strength to the maximum amount. So you won't be able, you'll lose your signal strength information with an AND gate, whereas with the transistor, you will not. Now the way we build it, um, it's pretty simple. If you have a piston, then you have a opaque block. Again, um, pretty much everything has to be opaque because that always has to carry redstone signals. Then you have an input that goes into the piston to allow it to extend. When it's extended, you have an input signal that is dust or a comparator or a repeater. Um, you have, if you have dust, you need to have a comparator or a repeater on the other end of the block. If you have a comparator or repeater going into the block, you can grab the signal with redstone dust, but you need to have the repeater or comparator on one end. Um, doing this will not work. You have uh, the repeater, then you just have your input signal here, and then if I do this, we can see that the input signal is being propagated, and then we can turn it off, and the output signal turns off. Next up is the SR latch. Um, the SR latch stands for set reset latch, and it essentially is a way to store a signal indefinitely. Um, I like to call them memory cells, um, if you will. And essentially you have an off signal uh, that's just, it's just gonna be off until you do something, and then one of them is gonna be on. If you turn the one that's off on, it will then switch the sides that are off and on, and then if you get rid of this, it will remain in that position until you go to the other side, and then you turn that one on as well. Um, in the Minecraft world, the set and reset are can be anything. Um, it's really just set and then re uh, you know set a different one. Um, so it's symmetric in that case. It's convenient if you have something like a door lock, but it's using buttons, and a player can press a button multiple times, um, and you don't want it to you know switch the signals back and forth every time. And then you want to be able to reset them all at the same time. Um, so it's really convenient for something like that. The way you build it is you have a block that goes up. Um, it has to be opaque again. You place a redstone torch on the side. Redstone dust goes on top. Redstone dust goes down to the side of it. And then uh, two blocks away, we place another block, um, opaque again, and then redstone torch. These should be kind of like in the same row so that they don't interfere with each other. And then you place dust here and you place dust here. Um, so this is all you need. And then you have your input signal on one side go into you know anywhere on the dust. And then on the other side, again, anywhere into that dust as well. Next up is the T flip-flop, um, otherwise known as the toggle flip-flop. Um, it essentially has an input, and the input basically toggles whether or not the output is on or off. Um, the way you make it is a copper bulb of any kind. Then you have a comparator facing away from the bulb. Um, the output of the comparator is your input, or sorry, the output. And the input is whatever can turn off and on the copper bulb, which I just used redstone dust with a torch here, uh, but that could be anything you want. Now, I just want to say I am very grateful for the copper bulbs, so I don't have to build this thing anymore for T flip flops. That brings me to the B flip flop. The B flip flop is a T flip flop, but now uses a boat because it's cool. 
If you have the input go turn on, you can see that the output turns on. And if you turn the input back on, it will toggle the output to be back off uh, in a very timely manner. The B flip-flop is a joke flip-flop and should not be attempted in real world situations. Next up is the block update detector. Um, I'll admit, I've never actually had to use one of these for anything uh, in the real world, but essentially what it does is it measures the block updates next to the piston. Um, so if I update the block next to the piston, we can see that the redstone lamp will turn on. Um, this essentially abuses quasi-connectivity, um, and it's a specifically a Java edition uh, thing. Uh, the redstone block is powering the piston because it's powering the block above the piston. Um, however, because there's no block update, it hasn't really gotten the memo yet. Uh, but it gets the memo when you give it a block update. Um, when it pushes the redstone block up here, it no longer is being powered even by quasi-connectivity, so then it goes back down. Um, this is good for, like, if you need to measure crop growth or you're placing blocks um, or something like that. Now, if you're in Bedrock Edition, luckily for you, uh, you just use an observer. Um, observers just measure block updates in Bedrock Edition. In the case of Java Edition, we have to make something like this because it measures uh, changes in the block state, which may or may not trigger a block update. It's built by placing a sticky piston facing upwards, um, some sort of sticky block, either slime or honey, a redstone block, and then you have obsidian um, so that it doesn't stick to the sticky block. You have a redstone dust, and then this just goes off to whatever you want to go and power. Up next is the XOR gate, or the exclusive OR gate. Um, if you're going to remember one thing from the video, I would recommend remembering this one because it's extremely useful. Um, it's another type of logic gate. We have one output and we have two inputs. And essentially, its output is on when both of the inputs are different and it's off otherwise. So both of the inputs are off, so the output's off. One input's on, the output's on. Another input is on, the output's on. But the main kicker is that when I turn this one on, the output turns off. Um, and this is how I'm able to use levers for doors, where I have a lever on the inside of my base and I have a lever on the outside of my base, and I'm able to use them independently and still open and close the door from both sides. Um, the way we build it is we have two comparators side by side. We right click them to put them into subtract mode. Then we place redstone dust all along the bottom and the sides. Um, so on the right and the left, and we go all along the bottom. Um, now we place two redstone dust connecting the two top uh, sections. The output will need to be uh, a repeater because these have a signal strength of like one or something. Um, so you just need to immediately refresh it. It doesn't matter which side you use it on. Um, it could be the right or it could be the left side. I'm gonna put a lamp just for visual sake. Um, the inputs then have to have repeaters going into this quarter and this quarter. Um, the repeaters are there to make sure that the inputs have the exact same signal strength. Uh, because if one signal comes in and it has a signal strength of like 14 and the other comes in at 7, it won't work properly. Um, so you have to refresh them so that they're the same. Um, and in this case, we can see that we have it working where we have one, we have the other one, and then we have both of them and it turns back off. Now, briefly, I'm going to talk about something called multiplexers. Um, this is more of a, I'm telling you it exists rather than telling you how to build one because they are very application specific um, and I can't really give you a uh, size fits all solution here. But essentially what a multiplexer is, is it's a series of transistors that let you kind of choose a signal uh, from the inputs to put into your output signal. Um, so I have an output signal, which is just a combination of these three input signals. Um, and I will have a multiplexer uh, choose which input signal. Um, so basically I usually only have one input signal chosen at a time to put into the output. Um, so in this case, this input signal is a very weak signal um, and I'm using a comparator. So the signal strength is being transmitted through the transistor. Um, this middle one is a little bit stronger and then this one is as strong as it can be. So if I'm choosing this signal, we can see that the output signal only makes up the first two lamps. If I choose the middle one, it makes it up much further, but not quite to the end. Um, and then the one at max signal strength makes it all the way to the end. Um, so this is what a multiplexer does. Uh, but I would recommend making an application specific one. But that's just what the term is in case you need to look something up. All right, guys, that'll be it for this video. Um, if you have any other circuits that are really cool and people might not know, leave them down in the comments. I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope to see you next time.